So ignore my dishwasher, it's running. But I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do my crock pot Alfredo. I've never done this before, but I got this recipe from Jamrel Stewart and then Sarah from Our Tribe of Many does this all the time too. So I wanna try it because it looks so good and easy. Um, I'll link their videos down below if like you're interested, but it's basically one cup of butter, one cup of cream cheese, one cup of sour cream, a little bit of garlic if you have it, and then your chicken breasts, and then you like boil your noodles on the stove. You could do broccoli or whatever, eat this over cauliflower rice or like zoodles if you're doing like low carb or whatever, but I'm gonna throw it in. of butter is a cup of butter and now it says you turn it on either high for four hours or low for eight I'm gonna turn mine on low and if closer to supper time it's still not done I'll turn it on high but now I'm gonna set out my buns and then I have to shop back out the cracks for the trim yet got my garlic just a just a splash you could probably throw an onion in here too if you were feeling jazzy. Alrighty, close on the top, turn it on low. It's actually the next day, this is what's left of our Alfredo sauce here. We're eating it for leftovers, but the kids are eating theirs over the leftover linguine noodles. I'm eating mine over some cheese ravioli, just so you guys can kind of see what this looks like. Here's what I'm throwing in my pasties. I'm gonna link the actual. I'm gonna link the actual recipe down below that I follow. It's gonna show you how to make the dough to wrap your pasties in, like the pastry dough, all that good stuff. I'm cheating today, so I'm gonna show you guys the quick version of a pasty. The recipe calls for so many red baby or red potatoes. I'm gonna throw in these shredded hash browns. I already have them opened. I just need to use them before they go stale or gross. And it's already pretty late, it's almost noon, and I need to get this in the crock pot, so I'm cheating, these are gonna cook faster. You're gonna want some pork sausage, not breakfast sausage, just plain pork sausage. So this is, I think, eight ounces of pork, oh, 16 ounces of pork sausage. So let me show you, these are my onion sizes. I left them pretty big. That's how we like it. I put my ground meat in the microwave to thaw out a little bit so I could only take half of it. I can't cut it in oh, half, it's frozen. So cool. All right, so I already turned my crock pot on. I'm turning it on high. The last step, add a good old lava butter. Leave it, forget it, and I'll see you guys in a couple hours. But in the magic of YouTube, it'll be like two seconds. This is what our pasty filling's looking like. It's pretty much done. I just turned my crock pot completely off. I have about 45 minutes before I'm going to actually stuff these into my pastry dough, but it smells so, so good. The recipe I'm linking down below actually calls for a little bit of cream or, I think it's cream or half and half, I'm not sure. I don't put that in my filling. Uh, that's just personal preference, but you can definitely add that. Uh, you would do that now at this time if you're going to be adding those. But I'm gonna close this off, let it sit. Like I said, I turned my crock pot off because it's already hot. It's gonna keep it warm and uh, it's gonna get hot again in the oven while we're cooking it in our stuffed pastries. So out of convenience for myself, I'm using two packages of this uh, pizza crust from Pillsbury. These are pretty cheap at Walmart, not as cheap as making your own pie crust or pastry dough. I have not quite mastered that yet. It's something I'm still working on and quite frankly, I don't feel like putzing with it tonight, honestly. So I still opt with store-bought store doughs. This makes quite a bit between the two of them. Um, I have a family of five. We will be able to make enough pasties for all of us to eat tonight, my husband and myself to eat for lunch tomorrow as well. This is what I'm using, but like I said, the recipe will link the dough. Uh, we'll have the dough down below. But I'll show you guys how we're gonna stuff these here. No one stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out. So try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this. Day. 
town. These are gonna go in the oven, whatever it says on your package here. I'm gonna bake them. Um, top them with a little bit of butter so they get golden. And I'll show you guys what they look like at the end. But I'm gonna make two more of these bad boys. I just pulled my first two pasties out of the oven. When they come out, I just rub them with butter and sprinkle them with a little bit of parsley. I wanna drive a faster car. Nothing can break me, no. Nothing can break me. Try not to hold me down. Feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at the beautiful stars. I wanna take a trip to Mars. Nothing can break me, no. Nothing can break me. all my veggies on this tray here I had a pre-cut onion that I didn't use in a previous meal or for a previous dinner so I put that in with my potatoes anything everything is just seasoned with olive oil and seasoned salt I'm gonna go ahead and let these roast and I'm going to go get my protein and I'm actually gonna cook that on a separate pan and pop that in the oven as well just because it's gonna take less time to cook or more time to cook I'm not really sure but different different cooking time so we're gonna pop that on a different pan and throw that in the oven as well so this is my fish these two pieces are mahi mahi these are for my husband and I have three pieces of cod these are for me and my children these are the spices that went on everything uh, garlic powder onion powder Cajun except I did not put these on the fish that my kids will be eating lemon pepper seasoned salt and then a big old glob of butter and then I'm going to make an actual lemon butter for everybody to pour over the top of their fish once it's done cooking so I'm just gonna pop this in the oven I don't think I told you earlier my oven is on 400 veggies are starting to smell delicious I'm gonna put my fish on the bottom here and let it go I also always cook my fish on tin foil it just it'll save your pans and save you a lot of headaches so I highly recommend that and you're just gonna go ahead, close your oven, let this cook, stir around your veggies every once in a while, and that's pretty much it for this dinner. I'll show you guys, of course, what it looks like when it's all done on my plate. I'm getting ready to make a beef stroganoff. It was not on my meal plan this month, but I realized I had everything, so why not? Stew meat. I'm gonna use some elbow macaroni. Normally I would use like spirally noodles, but I don't have them right now. I'm gonna chop up an onion and some mushrooms and I'll walk you guys through what I'm doing. Uh, I've got water getting ready to boil. I'm gonna dump those in. I'm gonna chop up my onion and slice these mushrooms and cook these down in a pan with some olive oil. And once that's cooking down, I'm gonna add in my stew meat. So let's get to prepping. These are what my tips are looking like. I didn't add anything to this pan other than a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of Worcestershire. This is what I'm using as my salt element. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my gravy, but I also put on some green beans. So we're gonna have green beans with this dinner as well. All you're gonna need to make this like gravy sauce is something to shake. So I'm using one of my kids cups. You're gonna put in some ice cold water. So let that run for a minute. We're gonna put in some ice cold water in here and some flour. And I'm going to season mine with just a ton of pepper. And we're gonna shake the crud out of this thing until it mixes, it combines. And then I'm going to dump it right into this pan. So I just shook mine until it's smooth like this. Uh, if yours is lumpy, that just means your water wasn't cold enough. Go ahead, dump it out, get your water ice, ice cold. And we're just going to dump it in here. Stir this. And then go ahead and taste, adjust as you need but uh, I'm going to finish mine with a dollop of sour cream, probably a, a good dollop of sour cream, and we're gonna eat this over noodles with our green beans, but I'll show you guys kind of what this looks like towards the end, but I'm gonna give this a taste. Adjust to seasoning, I might add a tablespoon of beef soup base or just beef stock, 
if that flour water mixture kind of dulled out the seasoning that we had done previously. There's my dollop of sour cream. Mix this in. The sour cream is really forgiving. It will mellow it back out if you added too much soup base like I did. Kind of salty, so sour cream will take that out, make it creamy, smooth, delicious. And I'm just going to go ahead and let this kind of sit on a really low heat and mellow out, develop some flavor. And that's where it's going to sit basically until my husband gets home and we're all ready to eat. But I'm just going to make sure I stir in this sour cream pretty well at first. And uh, I didn't follow a recipe for this. I don't really like recipes that much. I don't like feeling constricted by recipes is what I've come to realize. So I like to use a recipe kind of as a road map. So this is kind of my own concoction of whatever the heck I felt like. So that's that. So I am making a big pot of chicken noodle soup for the next couple of days. I'm sweating down right now on my ginormous nine quart soup pot. Onions, garlic, carrots, celery with a little bit of olive oil and I'm just letting these kind of caramelize, develop a little bit of flavor on the bottom of my pot here. I usually do a whole chicken but today I kind of cheated and put two really large chicken breasts in my crock pot here. I seasoned them heavily with oregano, seasoned salt, onion powder, garlic powder, bay leaves, and basil. And then I put in just a little bit of water so they wouldn't stick to the bottom. This is done, I'm gonna turn this off. But once these carrots and stuff, uh, all these vegetables are a little soft, I'm going to dump in my water here and some chicken soup base and shred my chicken, throw those in, and kind of let it all simmer together with some more herbs, develop a lot of flavor. I'm gonna let this simmer on the stove for probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and just kind of all marry and develop and become beautiful. This is a whole one pound bag of Amish wide egg noodles. I'm cooking these separately, and when they're done, I'll throw them in with our soup here. I added three quarts of water some basil and bay leaves and this has just been simmering for a couple hours I also chopped my chicken and threw that in here as well so now we're just kind of waiting it's been simmering for a couple hours the vegetables are still kind of getting soft and then sorry those oven I've got rolls going on in here as well so once my noodles are done, I'm going to drain these, throw them in with the rest of the soup and kind of turn it down to a simmer and let it kind of all melt together for probably another 20 minutes or so. And then I'll serve it up and show you guys what it looks like. This is what the soup looks like. I didn't show a step-by-step -step process because I've shared this so many times on my channel. I'll link like a full in-depth video down below. Mistakes. I just wanna feel the pain. 